Hello and welcome. The night Princess Diana died, one of Britain's most prominent and controversial Arab businessmen also lost his son. And a decade on, he's still looking for answers. In their last hours together, Diana, Princess of Wales, and Dodi Al Fayed left the Ritz Hotel in Paris, heading out to the uh, back door to avoid the waiting paparazzi and crowds. Their chauffeured car raced through the city, pursued by photographers, and ended up slamming into a pillar in the Pont de l'Alma tunnel. Dodi Al Fayed and the driver were killed instantly, Princess Diana, a few hours later in hospital. Well, despite numerous inquests into the events of that night in August 1997, many questions remain unanswered. And later this year, yet another investigation is due to be launched in London. Although his father, Mohammed Al Fayed, hopes that finally he may find some closure. But will the full story ever be revealed? But don't forget, we want your questions and comments, and you can contact us through the details on your screen. But joining me now to talk about the inquest he says were flawed and his own relentless effort to bring what he calls overdue justice is Mohammed Al Fayed. Welcome, sir. Thank you. I have to start by asking you, uh, with your ongoing battle over this. Uh, closure that you need on, on Dodi's death. It's coming up to the 10th anniversary now. Are you, t are you still totally convinced that this was a plot by the British security services and perhaps the involvement of the royal family? I think myself that you believe that what happened to my son and to Princess Diana is absolute, clear, horrendous murder committed by the British royal family. So what line of inquiry are you pursuing now? Considering it's been 10 years, many inquests have been held, and, and so far no results in your favor, yeah. what line of inquiry are you pursuing now? As you know, I'm fighting to find the truth. Uh, and the power I am fighting, as you know, this is basically an organized crime by the British intelligence service ordered by the head of the, Brit the British royal family, Prince Philip. And as you know, Prince Philip is a person, Nazi at the core, German origin, grew up with Hitler, general. He'd been taken when he was six years old from his parents, who one of them was crazy, one was completely alcoholic, and uh, brought up by his auntie, who married Hitler, general. You want a bloody guy like that, ruling this country behind the scene, grow up with the Nazi, will accept my son to be the stepfather of the future king. Yes, but there's no way. But sir, of course... He's yeah. well known, racist at the mm -hmm. core, you know? Well, sir, of course, you, have, you obviously uh, have, you have no love for the, the British royal family, judging by what you say, and it's obviously your opinion and a strong opinion, but obviously what the, the inquests and the courts are asking for is evidence that uh, there is involvement. Yeah, but uh, if you are fighting state apparatus, official terrorist organization like MI6 who have executed the murder. You think it's easy. They are above the law. There's what? official secret act. You, above the law, you can't just, you know, I'm fighting the proof which will come definitely from the uh, French court which I'm fighting in the last 10 years that prove that the blood of the driver, Henry Paul, is not Henry Paul. And now the two major professors who have been in charge, the pathologists, under criminal investigation. And if it is proved that the blood of Henry Paul is not blood Henry Paul, and that's the proof, that's enough, you know. And uh, definitely the British, and you know, the intelligence service work together, help each other. The French intelligence have organized and helped the British intelligence to execute this murder because Henry Paul, he was working for me as a deputy security in the Ritz Hotel in Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, he was involved. He was working for the French intelligence and the British intelligence at the same time. If, if, uh, sir, and if, he'd, if been, uh, he'd been duped, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I was going to ask you, if obviously this, all this is weighted against you, if, as you say, the security forces are working in collusion and there is a, a major cover-up yeah. at the top level, it doesn't really leave you without much hope. So I wonder what you expect to come out of the, uh, the, the inquiry, the new public inquest that's due to take place later this year. Yeah. It's already, I'm fighting, already there is an inquest, and uh, the inquest definitely, they have documents, they have uh, uh, tapes, recording, Diana kept a uh, letter of threats from Prince Philip and Prince Charles. It's a lot of documentation which the coroner has to deliver to my lawyer. 
Do you have any expectation and you will same, get that? Do you, ex do you expect to get that at all? Do you expect to see any They had minutes? to deliver that. I've mm. been winning basically all the time against their wish, trying to cover up. And, and at the end, I'm certain, I believe in God, and I'm sure at the end I will expose those gangsters and official terrorists, you know? Would you expect uh, my son, Anthony, so Diana. Mm. Mr. Uh, Mr. Al Fayed, do you, would you expect at all there would be any chance? I mean, isn't it too far fetched to expect that Prince Philip all and uh, Princess all Charles all would, uh, would yeah. appear as, as witnesses? Uh, they had to appear because they are not above the law, and Prince Philip too. Let's see what you know. We asked if a few it is people. Really proved, if they really believe that they're living in democracy, yeah, they had to appear. Well, sir, we went, uh, above the law. we went out to the streets of Washington, D.C. to ask some people here if uh, they thought that uh, Diane and Dodi's death was made to look like an accident, and this is what they had to say. I don't believe it was planned by the British monarchy. I'm sh I understand as a father how he would feel like it is. If that happened to one of my children, I'm sure I would feel the same way. But based on the information that I have, I would say that it was probably a tragic accident, an unfortunate one for the family. You know, it's. I know it had to do with the paparazzi. I actually went to go visit the spot where she did. She did die, but um, it's. That's a tough call. I'm. I'm not sure if it was a conspiracy. Um, I really. I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> what did you feel when she died? It's. It was extremely, extremely sad. It's. I mean, she was a great person, and to a lot of people. So it was. It was very traumatic. I think the fact that she was having an affair with a Muslim, with an Egyptian Muslim, may have been seen as a threat to some people in the British establishment, but I don't believe that they would have killed him, no. I mean, because the, there's so many different stories going around, how can you really know, you know, what's, what's going on? And I'm sure if, if it weren't an accident, you know, somebody really knew how to make it look like it was, so. I really don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if there was something else going on. Mr. Alfaya, uh, those are some of the views of the people. Obviously, mixed reaction uh, from people in the, uh, on the streets of Washington, D.C., we asked. Now, one thing that's happened is your, your strong comments against the royal family, against Prince Philip, and uh, against the, the, the forces in Britain, the security forces, obviously has hurt your ability to do business in the UK. Your royal warrants on Harrods have been withdrawn and so on. And I wonder how, how much of a price you are willing to pay to allow this investigation, to continue your investigation. Whatever it's going to cost me to find the truth and all the truth, I can't stop because as a father who lost his son, you can't just leave those gangsters to get away because I'm the only person really knowing what happened. Diana was a very close friend of mine. She stayed two weeks just before she been murdered in my house and she told me exactly what she expects, the stretch she have and all the proofs in her position which unfortunately been in hands of her butler who have already been uh, arrested and all these documents have been taken away but and I'm certain with my uh, investigation and with the coroner investigation, I'll be able to recover all these proofs, which prove 100% because there's no way. Because they know they, uh, Diana was engaged, Diana was going to get married to Dodi, Diana was pregnant from Dodi, and they will not accept that. They will not under any circumstance, as I say, for Dodi with different nationality, the different religion, they will not accept that, 100%. Well, sir, and you, you know, I know that. 90% uh, of the British ordinary people in England believe in what I am saying, and I have tremendous support. Uh, people in the United States, they're far away. They don't understand the system here. They don't understand the, the way things are run. That's okay. Uh, just uh, some uh, ignorance, you know, people who don't hear knows exactly how right. the people well, here and how the races, you know, at the core, which this country really of course of course you fought this uh, you ruled, fought the battles you know, uh, yeah. so you fought the battles in the courts it's it's very expensive even in britain i mean maybe more so in america but certainly expensive in britain how much did, how much has it cost you out of your own pocket to to pursue the legal action so far i told you whatever gonna cost me whatever if i lose everything just to find the truth 
okay. as a father who lost his son, I will not let those gangsters get away what they have done to me, to expose them to the whole world. So we have they fighting terrorists, they yeah. fighting terrorists, but themselves have official terrorists, you know, we have to a, we have execute a caller. their wishes. Yeah. Uh, we have a caller with Anwar in, in Paris has a question for you, sir. Let's get Anwar on the line. What would you like to ask, Anwar? Thank you, Riz. I'd like to ask Mr. Al Fayad that uh, uh, I know he's deeply depressed and he has got a big sorrow in his heart. But with due respect, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Al Fayad that uh, he's blaming somebody else, that uh, somebody is uh, responsible for that. And on the other side, they are saying they have nothing to do with this. Uh, Mr. Al Fayad can give us any reasonable answer that who should we believe actually that we are confused the viewers are confused really who should blame which side who, okay. should we believe so obviously obviously uh, mr fayed there is uh, some confusion among the people they, they there are so many stories being told now uh, our friend uh, our viewer anwar in paris says he doesn't know who to believe anymore i can't understand what this guy talking about you know right. he himself that he doesn't know what he's talking about I think there's a, there is confusion. Let me get an email that we got from Dubai. Mohammed uh, Bhatt in the UAE sent us an email, and it's just a comment I, I want to share with you. It says, regarding Lady Diana's death, I believe there must be a conspiracy behind it because there are so many un unanswered questions even after almost 10 years. I believe that the British establishment is behind it. That came from Mohammed Bhatt in Dubai. But let me also ask you uh, to, to take on a question here from Adolfo uh, Talpalar in Stockholm in Sweden. And Adolfo sent this email saying, if there is a conspiracy, as al Fayed claims, he should provide unequiv unequivocal evidences of it. On the other hand, I believe that it is understandable that the terrible trauma produced by the death of Dodi may have produced in his father strong peculiar beliefs, but they may not necessarily be true. What I, what I wonder, uh, Mr. al Fayed, is could there be a time, could there come a time where you have to accept that you may perhaps never get the answer to what happened really that night in August 1997? You see, I'm a great believer in God, and I told you I know exactly what happened. I'm the only person who knows exactly what happened because I am the father of my son who I have lost him, and I am the friend of Princess Diana for when she was a child. I know exactly what I expect if my family is involved, member of my family, is involved with Princess Diana. And she warned me that she worried and is already disproved everywhere, right? And there is a letter and there is documents and there is already in hands of Scotland Yard, which I am fighting to get discovery to right. prove exactly what happened. Go it, you can just get people from uh, another planet and they know and you, uh, you think they are uh, understand what you're talking about. I think. Uh, the choice of people like that, you know, right. have no importance well, at all because we do they take don't understand, you know. Yeah. So we do yeah. take a viewer's call. So I've got Gordon on the line from Portugal. Gordon would like to uh, add something. Gordon, what, what's your question or comment? My Go on. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm coming out. I've got a couple of, couple of quick comments. Mm -hmm. And uh, one is that... Uh, uh, Go on, just keep going, uh, Gordon. Okay, okay, I'll keep going. Uh, uh, Mohammed Al Fayed is a, is a father in private grief. Ten years on, right? And I would like to just make the comment that uh, basically he's had some business deals in his past with MI6 as well. And uh, so what about the people in Northern Ireland that the what about the people in Northern Ireland that have had their children killed and everything, and there's been no investigations into these kinds of things? Okay, Gordon. So, so basically, the, I mean, what Gordon is doing is making a comparison. There have been other investigations. Uh, I mean, investigations that haven't been held. But I wonder, actually, that it raises an interesting point, uh, Mr. Alfayed. How have you managed to to fight, or at least to counter claims that have been made? You say there's a smear campaign against you, trying to link you to terrorists, uh, and uh, saying that you're a part of Al Qaeda. They what? There are, you know, there are, yeah, I, was, I, I know there have been smear campaigns against you, and you have said that there has been a, an attempt to label you a terrorist and so on. How have you been able to counter these, these uh, claims? Uh, I ignore such uh, stupid and idiot people, and some of these uh, claims are put by MI6 and MI5, the intelligence service, to ridicule me. 
and uh, I don't care about them. It ha have no effect at all on me. Let me ask you about the, the difficulties you faced over the years. You're a very prominent businessman in Britain. You, you know, heading up an elite store such as Harrods. You've been very much in the limelight, but you also paid a price. You haven't been given British citizenship, though you fought for it very heavily. You've had uh, various uh, comments and criticisms in the press. I wonder why do you keep doing business in in Britain if this is what you have had to face there? You know, after the uh, revolution in Egypt and my business being nationalized and uh, as you know you grow up with uh, the british rule for uh, they've been ruling egypt for 80 years you speak the language you have basically british education and the only country i find to come over here to continue my business i've been here for 40 years i have four british kids and uh, i have done a lot of things for united kingdom from uh, creating a lot of business, a lot of investment, a lot of export. I paid billions in taxes. And uh, it's my country now. And uh, do you, do I you don't still care about it because yeah. I'm so popular with the ordinary people. And 90% uh, of the British people, or the ordinary people, support me. And I don't care about the idiots who really uh, attack me or the people who have caused this devastation for me by right. murdering my son, sir, uh, murdering sir? Prince Diana. And I believe in God. Yeah, I wonder. And do you do you still uh, hope? Sure. Do you still hope to get a British citizenship? I mean, is there still a chance you I might want to get it? For me, it's irrelevant. If for me, it's irrelevant. You know, I came from a country with seven thousand year civilization. To be proud to have British uh, Egyptian passport, right? If Egyptian passport is the cradle of civilization of the whole world, you think I will worry about the British nationality? They come and kiss my hand, right? If they want me to have, I don't care about it. It's not, right. it's not important. In spite, I give my life for 40 years, helped everybody creating employment, pay billions in taxes. But this is all the bloody politicians who are ruling this country, you know, well, who Mr. just Hyatt? don't appreciate, you know, an yes, investor sir. like me, you know. Well, we've run out of time, but we thank you for talking with us. We'll, of course, uh, stay in touch and try to find out what happens later in the year when the uh, inquiry takes place. Thank you very much for answering our questions. Thank you for giving me the chance to give my ideas. Thank you. Thank okay. you, sir. Well, thank you for being with us. I'll be away next week, but my friend and colleague, Anna Naidu, is uh, filling in for me again. Do join him for uh, more of these questions and answer sessions. Don't forget, if you have any thoughts about pressing issues around the world, you can send your emails to riz at aljazeera.net. Street Talk is coming up next.